Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and look at this, this big white box that says for more shining ideas is the Einscan S from Shining 3D. In a partnership with Printed Solid, I've acquired this unit to see what it does. So let's do this. Are you ready? Go. Ah, uh, welcome back. Like I said, Printed Solid and I, well, we're good friends. And uh, through, through a partnership with Printed Solid, I've acquired this Einscan S from Shining 3D. And the goal is to open the box, put it to task, and find out if it does what it's supposed to do. What's interesting about this is this is the very, very first 3D scanner I've really used. Uh, so I guess this will be fairly honest and fairly unbiased because I... I'm going to be honest, I don't know what I'm doing yet, but I hope to learn, and I hope to find out, and I hope to give you uh, an idea of what this really means. With this unboxing, I, uh, I'll take it out of the box. I will attempt to scan something, and then we'll see what happens from there. So don't, this is not a review, this is me taking it literally out of this box and putting it to use. Alright, let's, let's, let's attack this box here, it's got two tabs, one right here. One right here. I'm gonna open the top. I'm gonna show you. Ooh, it's styrofoam. Oh, that's that's right. Your friend and my friend styrofoam. At least it's all in a bag. So what's interesting about this all being in one bag is it's extremely easy to take out of the box. Handy. It's a Ziploc bag. Meant to keep scanners fresh. Some stuff is falling. Uh, all right, we'll go over what this stuff is after we get it out of the box, but for now, let's just, let's just get it out of the box. All right, we've got everything out of the box. Uh, it looks like there's some important stuff here. This looks like a turntable. This looks to be the actual Einscan unit. Here's a power cable, USB cable. A second USB cable. Here we've got a stand. This looks to be a flap of some sort. My guess is this is some sort of calibration piece. This bag held various hardware pieces. Here we've got a power brick. And here we've got a secondary power brick. Last but not least is this, which shows placement. So I would imagine the turntable goes here and the scanner goes here. And this is a handy dandy card that shows me how to put everything together. At this point, I should probably mention that I've had this for a while, but this is the first chance I've had to unbox it because I've recently acquired a PC laptop. And the reason for that is the software that runs Einscan is PC only. I talked to Shining3D about this, and they said people have successfully run it on Macintosh platforms, but they've either used Bootcamp or they've used Parallels or VMware to emulate. And at that point, uh, I just I, I figured it was better to get a hardware platform rather than emulate it via software because, well, I'm a dork and I like gadgets. So I have this, this PC laptop right here to drive this machine. And I've also pre-installed the Einscan software installer on here, which we'll go through in just a bit. According to the quick start guide, I need to hook the power and the USB cables up to the turntable and the scanner and then put together the stand and then move it into place so that it's, uh, it's the right distance apart from each other, plug it into the laptop, run the installer. So let's do it. All right, at this point, I've got it put together, and uh, my first impression is it's not an elegant solution. The reason the power supply and the USB cables are all duplicated is because both the turntable and the scanner head have to have a USB connection, they have to have a power supply, and they need that power cord plugged into the power supply. That's the reason there's all this duplication. What I find interesting, is that uh, they didn't have a solution to connect the scanner to the turntable or vice versa and then have some sort of single cord coming out of it. I don't know if that's possible, but that's just, again, my first impression. So now it's time for me to put together this and it looks like it goes like that and I'm done. I guess now it's time to calibrate. I've got this software installed. It had to reboot a few times, install some drivers, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, I need to put this on the turntable. I need to put it on the turntable like so. 
And then you can see right here, some stuff is happening. It's exciting. Uh, place the calibration support board in the center of the table. It's figure A. Okay. And then I've got, um, I guess I've got snap or exit. We'll choose snap. It's moving. Figure B says it wants me to rotate the, the board. So I guess I take it out and I put it like this. Get in there. And then I snap. All right, I'll let you know when this is done. All right, it looks like we're at the point where we can actually attempt to scan something. I went through the calibration. It was really easy. It had to do with moving this around, but since that's calibrated, we can put that over there and not worry about it. I've started the software and through the presets, I'm gonna choose, there's texture or non-texture scan. I don't need a texture. And I'm gonna choose high detail because I'm going to choose this. This is what mini Joel looks like when he comes off of the form two. In fact, it's usually attached like that. It looks like that. But I figured this is interesting because it's got a lot of interesting detail and it'll be interesting to see if this scanner picks it up. So. Here you go, Mini Joel. I'm gonna put you right there. I'm gonna choose high detail, non-texture, watertight, apply. There were literally no instructions in the software telling me what to do next. It told me what to choose and then it just left me at a blank screen. It looked like there was a play button over here. So I hit the play button. We'll see what happens. <laughs>All right, it looks like it's done. It didn't really give any indication that it was done other than the screen check mark and this red X and the scan looks horrific. Absolutely terrible. But I don't know if it's done. So I'm gonna hit that green check mark because I guess it's done. And um, uh, let's see, there's an end scan button. It looks like end scan fast mesh. I will, I will click on that. I guess, no? Okay. Maybe now it's doing magic. Again, I, this is my first experience with this, so I'm just taking you along the ride. Uh, it looks like there's a progress bar. I'll let you know when that's done. It looks like the scan is done, and it looks like it cleaned it up a little bit because uh, you, you can tell it's not as bad as it was, but let's take a look. So here's the model. And I think possibly the form supports are a little bit too hard for a scanner to pick up. I guess that kind of makes sense. Uh, the rest, it looks like where the supports were, it's just a giant blob. And in the back where all the supports are supposed to be, it's just a giant blob. Perhaps this model was too complex. Let's try a different model. Okay, for the next test model, I figured I'm gonna do this. And this is a little trophy printed in PLA. And this was a trophy for getting through Monday. Not too shabby. Let's try it out. For the trophy, I'm gonna choose non-texture scan. I'm gonna choose watertight model. And rather than high detail, I'm going to choose middle detail. Let's see, now we have to choose how bright it is. I think it's bright. Yeah, this is a... Uh, it is shiny, it is difficult to scan. I don't know, let's try bright and see what happens. We do have this difficult to scan button and maybe, maybe that'll be it, but let's try bright first. All right, again, it's, I, I guess I hit the play button. Maybe. Maybe. Ah, okay, it's doing something. like we're done and we're presented with this screen right here and there's that green check mark and that red X this is what the model should have been and this is what it came up with but let's hit that green check mark let's see if where's my mouse there it is let's see if that does something okay I guess it ends ends it um, I guess there's the end scan I don't know what any of these buttons do 
Let's see, we'll go end scan, fast mesh. Model is done rendering and it looks like, yeah. <laughs> 3D scanning and, and uh, open areas probably don't mix well. So there's the trophy. I still win this for surviving a Monday. That though, that's not very trophy-like. Um, all right, let's, let's back up for some final thoughts. All right, so at this stage, we, this is what we know. Uh, I know nothing about 3D scanners yet. I've learned a little bit in this process. Uh, the setup was fairly easy according to this document. I thought that the, the way they wired things is a little redundant in ways and they could have simplified that process. I think that the software uh, could use a little bit of TLC. It's not intuitive and I found parts of it to be extremely confusing. I want to say the scanner shows promise because obviously it's picking up some things, but maybe it's just I'm not picking the right things to scan. Again, I don't know as much. Uh, if, if you want to experiment with your own Einscan S, uh, I'll, I'll put a link down in the description where you can pick one up yourself. Otherwise, uh, I'll do my best to keep learning and we'll see what I can come up with. Well, there we go. So give it a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions, and I'll do my best to get to those. Again, a big thanks to my patrons. They support me at patreon.com, and they are awesome people that deserve all the high fives. I promise. Let's see. Beyond that, a big thanks to Printed Solid, and a big thanks to Shining 3D for sending this unit to me for an unbiased, honest look. Um, gosh, I guess that's it. Well, you guys, don't forget to hug each other more often. I love you guys. As always, high five.